Hi guys, this is Teacher Juma. I dedicate these online classes for chemistry to all the candidates wherever they are, especially these hard times. As you stay at home, please uh, look at this work, take it seriously. I'm doing my part. I hope you also do your part. Feel free to consult. You can send back uh, your feedback in form of questions. You can also request some topics, uh, whether from four, from three, from two, or even from one work. I will be glad to be of help to you. So as is, they say, this is the matter of invention. We also have to cope up with the situation and also invent and see how we can conquer this situation. So I hope that you will cooperate and uh, take this work seriously and it will be of much benefit to you. So to start with, I'm going to start with the Form 4 syllabus and the topic I'm going to handle to start with is energy changes in physical and chemical reactions or chemical processes. So the topic energy changes in chemical and physical processes. To start with, what is energy? Energy is ability to do what? There are different forms of energy. For example, light energy, heat energy, electrical energy, mechanical energy, and so forth. One form of energy can be converted into another form of energy using a suitable device which we usually refer to as a transducer. For example, the heat energy from the sun can be converted into electrical energy using a solar panel. So the solar panel in this case is what we call the transducer. Then the electrical energy can be transmitted through uh, the electrical wires to the bulb and then it is converted now to light energy. So we have converted heat energy to electrical energy to light energy. So that's an example in which uh, one form of energy is converted into another form of energy. Now energy is expressed in joules. The units for measuring energy is joules. Energy, the SI unit for energy is joules. The symbol is capital J. Also take note that a thousand joules is equivalent to one kilo joule. The unit is kj and mark this. The k is small, the j is capital. During reactions, whether chemical or physical reactions, energy is either given out or it is taken in. This leads to two types of processes or reactions. One we call exothermic and the other one we call endothermic reaction. So what is an exothermic reaction? An exothermic reaction is a reaction in which heat energy is given out. You can also say it is evolved, it is liberated, or it is released. While in an endothermic reaction, heat energy is absorbed, or you can say it is taken in. So the reactant takes in the energy, and then they use it to form products. There are some indicators you can look at to tell whether the reaction was endothermic or exothermic. And one of them is looking at the amount of uh, the heat content, what we call the heat content. For the exothermic reactions, for the exothermic reaction, the heat content of the reactants is usually higher than that of the product. And this is best illustrated using an energy level diagram. Now this diagram here is what we call an energy level diagram. So in this energy level diagram, you can see the reactants are at a higher level, the products are at a lower level. 
So if you see the diagram like this, then you can conclude that that reaction represented by such an energy level is an exothermic reaction. That means heat energy was given out during the reaction. Another parameter you can also use is look at the temperature. If there is increase in temperature, then that reaction is exothermic. The increase in temperature is due to the heat energy that has been given out by the reaction. The heat that has been liberated leads to rise in temperature. So when the temperature rises or increases, it means that the reaction is exothermic. On the other hand, for the endothermic reaction, the energy of the reactant is usually lower than that of the products. Looking at a diagram like this, this represents this energy level diagram represents an endothermic reaction in which you can see the products are at a higher level, the reactants are at a lower level. You can also use the temperature, decrease in temperature. So when this during the reaction the temperature drops, then you can tell that that reaction is endothermic when the temperature decreases. So it means heat energy is being absorbed. Why the temperature drops is because heat energy is absorbed from the surrounding, including the solution in which the reaction is taking place. That heat energy is absorbed by the reactants and then it is used to form the products. And that is why also the products have more energy or they have um, their energy is at a higher level because during their formation some heat energy was added, it was absorbed from the environment, then it was added. Hence the products have more energy. Unlike the exothermic rea the reaction where the products have less energy. Why? It is because during the formation of this product some heat energy was lost to the environment. It was given out and then when it is given out usually it is lost to the environment or it is, uh, some of it is absorbed by the apparatus in which the experiment is taking place. So that's why the reactants in an exothermic reaction, uh, the reactors have more energy, but products have less energy because this some energy will be lost. Now looking at this energy level diagram for the reactors, the gap between the reactants and the products represents the amount of heat that was released or that was lost or that was given up. For the endothermic reaction as well, the gap between the reactants and the products represents the amount of heat energy that was absorbed during the reaction. On the diagram, you can also note this, the energy level diagram. For the exothermic reaction, the arrow always points down because of the decrease in quantity of amount of energy from reactants to products, there is a drop in energy due to due to the heat loss, so the arrow points down. While for the endothermic reaction, you, uh, on the diagram, the arrow always points up. Why? Because there is an increase in amount of energy. The heat content that the reactants had, plus that which was absorbed, leads to an increase in heat energy. So because of increase, now the arrow uh, points up. Then you have products from at a higher level. Let's uh, look at two examples of reactions which represent the exothermic and endothermic processes. I have two substances here. Example, we are going to dissolve sodium hydroxide in water and uh, for endothermic, to illustrate endothermic reaction, we will dissolve barium nitrate in water. So we will start with sodium hydroxide. So here we have a uh, the alcohol thermometer which we are going to use then here I have water so this is water so in this beaker this is where we are going to add sodium hydroxide this is an alcohol thermometer now first thing is to measure the initial temperature of water we must do a thermometer in water for about a minute or two until a constant temperature has been reached so we allow it a few minutes. So then you read 
the temperature or the thermometer. So the reading on this thermometer is 24.5 degrees Celsius. So that would be our initial temperature. And then here, over here, I have um, sodium hydroxide. So one gram sodium hydroxide. So I'm going to put this sodium hydroxide in 100 ml water. The amount of water here is 100 milliliters. So I'm going to pour all the sodium hydroxide here. So before we pour in, we confirm again, our temperature reading is still at 24.5 degrees Celsius. So I'll add all the sodium hydroxide. Make sure I transfer all the sodium hydroxide. So I have put all the sodium hydroxide in 100 ml uh, water. Then I start gently as we note if there is any change in temperature. And uh, from here I can notice that the temperature has risen now it is the reading is at 25 degrees celsius it is slight increase as more dissolves more uh, sodium hydroxide dissolves the temperature still continues to rise steadily and now the reading is at 26 so the temperature is rising steadily you can see that 26 degrees Celsius. So gently minimize friction, minimize scratching of the beaker because friction will generate heat energy. Therefore, the value that we will read of on the thermometer will be a wrong value. So the stirring has to be gentle. So stir gently. Temperature has reached 26.5. Almost all the sodium hydroxide has solved almost. So we have to dissolve all of it. Temperature 26.5. Final reading. Highest temperature reached 26.5 degrees Celsius. I have another beaker here with water. I have labeled this one barium nitrate. So in this beaker, I will add all the barium nitrate that I have over here and then start to dissolve. Also have another thermometer here that we are going to use. So as well, first we start by taking the initial temperature of water. So you immerse the thermometer inside the water, the beaker. There will be change in temperature you allow until um, it reaches a constant value. So you allow it to read the temperature of water before the start of the reaction. This is what we usually refer to as room temperature. So the temperature, uh, in this case, the temperature uh, is at 25 degrees Celsius. So that becomes the room temperature, 25 degrees Celsius.
Then over here, this is barium nitrate, three grams of barium nitrate. The previous experiment used one gram sodium hydroxide, but here I'm using three grams. So I transfer all the barium nitrate into the 100 ml water in the glass beaker. I'm using the glass beaker for the sake of transparency or easier visibility. But the best is a lag plastic beaker which we shall be using in um, later experiments. So here also we start gently, start gently until all the barium nitrate has dissolved. And minimize, try to avoid scratching of the beaker as much as possible to prevent friction. I said earlier, friction will lead to generation of heat. Now the temperature has started to drop. Now it is at 24.5 from 25. So we gently. down from 25 degrees Celsius. So the reading here is not 24 degrees Celsius from 25. So this is therefore an example of an endothermic reaction in which we have seen there is a decrease in temperature. So that marks the two types of process or the example for the two types of processes that is the exothermic reaction and endothermic reaction and that will mark um, uh, the end of our first lesson so in the next lesson we are going to see how to represent the data for the two on the energy level diagram draw the energy level diagram for the dissolving of sodium hydroxide and we also draw the energy level diagram for dissolving of barium nitrate that will be covered in our next lesson number two thank you